Streaming games is a very common thing in the 21st century. And while it's a medium used for having fun and bringing laughter into people's lives, it brought me the worst experience of my life. My name is Jason Miller, and what you are about to hear is that gruesome experience. I used to be obsessed with video games as a kid. It actually all started when I stayed the weekend at a friend's house. That was the first time I played a video game. When I got home that day, I remember I begged my parents to buy me one, but they didn't agree. Apparently, my mom had recently read a really stupid article on how video games deplete your mental capabilities. I remember her telling me, those games can kill you. They can rot your brains. My mom's mindset led to me not getting any games throughout my childhood. And when I turned 17, I thought it would be different as I was older now. So I asked my parents for a gaming PC and they still said the same thing. That's when I decided to get it by myself. So I began to do some menial jobs to get the money. I mowed countless lawns, watched numerous cats, and I even offered to massage my old neighbor's back. And while most of these were really tiring, it was completely worth it. As nothing could beat the amazing feeling I had when I got my first gaming PC. While getting the gaming PC was great, Starting my first Twitch channel was even better. Due to my love for video games, I wanted to become a Twitch streamer ever since Twitch was a thing. So I immediately started my channel the week I got my gaming PC. When I was starting out, I knew numerous popular streamers played mainstream games like Fortnite, Minecraft, Apex, PUBG, and the rest on their stream channels. But I found myself wanting to play a survival game called Dead by Daylight. For those of you who don't know about DVD, it's a survival horror game where you could play as one of four survivors trying to survive being killed, or you could be the killer trying to kill the four survivors by impaling them on huge rocks. I really loved playing the game because it was really good and I loved all the horror elements that were present in the game. And while it wasn't as popular as Fortnite or PUBG, it had a really strong fan base. In a retrospect, I guess I didn't want to be like everybody else, so I decided to try and play something different. Something that wasn't as popular as the games everyone else was playing. So when everything had been set up, I steadily started streaming. I invited my friends to play with me every time I played, and I put a lot of time and effort into growing my channel. And with time, my followers and my viewers began to rise. Before I knew it, I had 20,000 viewers per week, and I remember being really happy and excited about that. I had probably streamed numerous times before this incident happened. I was playing a private game with my friends on DVD, and during the game, we kept on getting harassed and insulted by a particular player called I'm a Real Killer 12. Since I had my chat box on every time during the gameplay, this dude with the player ID I'm a Real Killer 12 kept trolling me and sending weird messages. He kept on saying things like, You guys are useless. You can't even play this game. Your form is all wrong. Killing looks so much better in real life. It was pretty obvious that he just wanted to get my attention, and I didn't like confronting trolls, but it was getting pretty annoying, so I remember entertaining him one day as I asked him, as if you could do any better. Just leave us alone, dude. I came to regret that decision during our next game because the player called I'm a Real Killer 12 had hacked our private game, and he started stream sniping me and my friends. It started when I noticed that one of my friends, Nate, wasn't in the game. As the killer character being used was the character Evan McMillan, popularly known as The Trapper. And again, for those of you who don't play the game, The Trapper was basically one of the major original characters in the DVD game. He used beer claws to catch his victims, and he wore a really creepy mask. Now, once we saw the character being used in the game, we knew something was wrong. As while The Trapper was an original DVD character, we always used more popular characters like Wraith, Huntress, and The Doctor. It was pretty obvious that we had been hacked by a real killer 12, and we could also tell that he was stream sniping as he always knew exactly where our characters were hiding, and he also used speed hacks to kill us faster, as his character was moving faster than the endgame characters were allowed to. Now, I don't know if you've ever been stream sniped before, but it takes all of the fun out of the game you're playing, as you're killed pretty quickly and that doesn't allow you to get more gaming time for your viewers to watch. And while I didn't report him immediately after the first game because 
I thought it'd be a one-time thing. He constantly kept hacking and stream sniping me throughout the rest of the week. So I did what every Twitch streamer would do, and I reported him. He was banned, and unfortunately for me, that was another decision I'd come to dearly regret. Everything went back to normal after that, and I played and streamed numerous games the following week without any problems. Everything was fine till the 9th of October, a day I can never forget. My parents were out of town with my elder brother, so it was just me, my little sister, and two of my friends who were sleeping over. They had all gone to bed pretty early, so I decided to start streaming. I remember being happy that they were asleep as I didn't want any distractions while streaming. I also remember putting my headphones on as I began the stream. They were saying things like, Bro, sick cosplay. Did you hire an actor? Nice touch to add real screams in the background. This is your best stream yet. Shit, you had him stand behind you. That was really creepy, dude. Dope cosplay, though. I really didn't understand what was going on or what my viewers were reacting to as I was laser focused on the game. But after thinking about it, I told myself that it was probably just someone's antics or prank I didn't understand. So I decided to ignore it and keep playing. I streamed for a long time that night, and when I was done, I began to interact with my viewers. I wasn't playing the game anymore, so I asked them what was going on as I wanted to know what they were reacting to. They then told me that they saw someone wearing the trapper's costume and standing behind me. At first, I thought they were joking as I told them. Really funny, guys. I'm basically the only one awake at home. My little sister and my friends are all sleeping, so you can stop trying to scare me now. But my viewers continued to assure me that they weren't joking, as they actually saw a huge man standing behind me, wearing the trapper's costume. They also said they had heard screams in the background. I still didn't believe them, as I assumed it was just an organized prank. So I took off my headphones, and as I was about to end the live stream, I heard a large crash coming from one of the bedrooms upstairs. Shocked, I stood up immediately to go check it out as the noise came from my little sister's room. But on the way there, I was distracted by a red liquid trail leading all the way to my sister's bedroom. Scared, I walked towards the room and slowly opened the door. As I stepped into the room, I heard the sound of clanking metal and it was followed by searing pain as I felt something sharp and close my leg. I screamed as I fell to the floor. The pain was truly unbearable. I looked down to see my leg clamped by a bear trap. I began to call out to my friends and my little sister for help, but no one was answering me. I then started to look around, hoping to see something I could use to set myself free. But the first thing I saw made me stop and fear. It also made me forget about the pain in my leg for a split second. As I watched in horror, as my little sister Stephanie and the two of my friends, Maxwell and Jack, were dangling from massive hooks attached to an old cupboard. I knew they were all dead as they were impaled near the chest region. The morbid scene in addition to the searing pain made me throw up as I started to scream again. I began to ask myself why this was happening. Why was my little sister and two of my friends killed in a morbidly similar way characters in the DVD game were killed? I began to have a mental breakdown as my mind couldn't take it anymore. It felt like my brain and my body was about to implode, and as I was about to pass out, I heard the words that pulled me back to my senses as someone said, I told you it looks better in real life. I immediately turned over to see someone looming over me. The person was donning the costume of the Trapper character in the DVD game. I was paralyzed with fear, but I remember screaming, Who are you? The man totally ignored my question as he said, You took it away from me. I used it to clear up all the tension I have inside. I streamed that game to show my followers the proper and true form of killing, but you took it away from me by getting me banned. So, I've decided to play a real-life version of the game with the members of your family. I remember feeling really dizzy as the man spoke. I was losing a lot of blood, and I knew I was going to pass out soon. I also remember how he spoke with a really thick accent that I couldn't recognize. But when I heard the word banned, a dreaded feeling of realization rushed through me as I slowly said, Are you? I'm a real killer 12? He didn't answer me as he proceeded to drag me out of the room by my hair. 
The pain increased a thousand times as the bear trap was still clamped to my leg. I started to scream for help, but I knew it was pointless as the only people at home were dead. The man then left me in the center of the hallway as he went downstairs to retrieve something. I tried to move, but my whole body hurt. It didn't take long before I heard him coming back, and when he reached me, I noticed he was now holding a really jagged dagger. He then started to scream. I told you that you were a useless and horrible gamer. You had no form when it came to killing, so I hacked your game and showed you how it's supposed to be done. But you couldn't take it, so you reported me. You reported me! Now watch as I ban you from life! And with that, he gutted me with the dagger. I can still remember the pain I felt and the feeling of the blade inside of me. At that point, I just wanted to die so that the pain would stop. The man removed the blade from my body, and as he was about to stab me in the heart, I heard the words, Open the door! It's the cops! The last thing I saw that night was my attacker running through the window at the end of the hall. As after that, everything around me went dark. I woke up in the hospital, surrounded by the police. The moments that followed were really painful, as I had to retell and relive all that happened that night to the cops, as they needed to further their investigation. When they were done with the questions, the cops left. The doctor came in, and he told me that I was lucky to have been found early, as I had lost a lot of blood, and if my leg hadn't received the immediate treatment, they would have had to carry out an amputation. I stayed in the hospital for two months after the morbid incident. The cops told me and my family they still haven't been able to find the killer. They then told us that the detectives believed my attacker was already an experienced serial killer as nothing was found at our house during the investigation. No fingerprints or anything incriminating. They tried to find his location by tracking the IP address gotten from his gaming profile, but that was equally unsuccessful. They then told us that the case would remain open, but he still hasn't been found to date. Now that my story is out there in the world, I have something to say to the man who killed a member of my family. I hope they find you and bring you to justice. And one day, like the title of the game, I hope you're dead by daylight. Hi, my name is Nathan, and I was once addicted to video games. Just like any teenager, I would play games whenever I had free time. I was 16 years old when this incident happened. I just started playing Call of Duty with my friends. I was super addicted, and I don't want to brag, but I was pretty good. I was better than my friends who had played video games before me. A single mom raised me, and we didn't have much. I knew how hard my mom worked, so that I couldn't ask for much. While growing up, I played games mostly at my friend's house. On my 12th birthday, my mom finally blessed me with a PlayStation 2. It was cheap, but I appreciated it. Ever since then, I have saved up my money to buy video games. On the day of the incident, I had invited my friends over to my house to hang out. After eating, we decided to play video games. As usual, I was leading in the games we were playing. My friends are always bragging about how good I am at video games, and sometimes people even challenge me, and I always win. After a while, my friends went to their various houses, so I decided to clean up and play some more games. After cleaning up, I went to my room and started playing Call of Duty. It was going well until someone got mad and started complaining. His username was a slow death. Every time I won, he kept saying I'm cheating. I wondered how that was possible, so I told him he was dumb. He got so mad and started cursing me out. When I realized how serious the situation was getting, I decided to apologize. I'm sorry, man. It's not that deep. The apology worsened the situation as he continued insulting me. I decided to stop playing for a while, so I left the room. I went to bed that night wondering how someone could take a game so seriously. It's not as if I was killing or hurting him for real. It was just a game. I guess it's more than a game to some, I said that night. The next day after my football practice, I started to continue my game. But to my surprise, not long after I started playing, Slow Death joined the room. I thought it must have been someone else with a similar username, until I heard his voice. You ran away last night like a coward, and let's see if you can beat me now. 
I laughed silently because it was becoming pathetic. After beating him severely, he started mumbling some words, and it was obvious he was getting upset. I didn't say anything. I just kept laughing, and he kept getting angry. I was having fun beating him until I had the scare of my life. Oh, keep laughing, Nathan. I'm coming for you. It took me five seconds before I realized he had just called my name. I froze for a while. How was it possible for him to know my name? My username is not similar to my name. How did you know my name? I said, stammering in fear. I know everything about you and your pathetic mother. I'm coming to hurt you. I turned off my video game immediately and started panicking. I took my phone and called my mom. She was safe at work. I let out a sigh of relief and locked all the doors. I called my friend and explained what had happened. I was so scared, but he calmed me down, saying it was just a guess. So I calmed down and decided he was just a freak trying to threaten him. After a while, I decided to continue playing my game and ignore the troll. Immediately when I started playing, this guy popped up again. This time, I was ready for him. Once he started insulting me, I charged back at him. We went back and forth insulting each other. As soon as he mentioned my mom, I insulted his mom too. I said words like, Your mom's a dirty bitch. You're a bastard and a coward. If you show up in front of me, I'm going to beat you just like I beat you here. I said, laughing historically. Suddenly, he went offline. So I thought he ran off like a scaredy cat. Little did I know, I was about to experience hell. It was getting late and my mom was still at work. She was running late that night. I was in my bedroom texting when I heard a knock on the door. It was weird because it was late. Did my mom forget her keys again? Before I could leave my room, the knocking started getting aggressive. I walked to the door and shouted, Mom, is that you? There was no reply. I was about to open the door when I heard a familiar voice. I'm not your mom, you fool. Open this door and beat me like you promised to. Chills ran down my spine. My eyes popped as I moved away from the door. Is that who I think it is? I thought to myself. Slow death? I called out. My voice shook like I was in front of a hungry tiger. He let out an evil laugh. <laughs> I'm glad you recognize my voice. Now open this door before I force my way in, he said. This time he was banging on the door. I ran into my room, took my phone and called the police. The police will be here anytime soon. You better leave now, I said confidently. Instead, he started banging on the door with his body, hoping to force himself in. I knew he was going to break the door because my door was cheap and weak, so I ran to my room and locked the door and windows. It wasn't long before he broke in. I could hear him scavenging through my house, and finally, he got to my door. It wasn't long before he broke it. I was ready for him. I was pretty athletic myself. I took a bat from my drawer as a weapon. When he entered... I knew I was in trouble. He was at least six foot four. His muscles were huge like a wrestler's and he looked at least thirty. I stood in my room, frozen, staring at the monster-like man ready to pound me at any moment. I was trying so hard to control my emotions, but I couldn't help myself. I started crying. I called the police already. Leave now and I won't tell the police anything. If you hurt me, you'll go to jail. I said in tears. I'm not scared of jail, he said as he walked close to me and punched me in the face. I fell to the ground. I'd never felt such pain before. I cried. Blood was already all over my face and I started begging for my life. He grabbed me by the collar and lifted me like I was nothing. His horrible breath was the least of my problems as he threw me across the room. I couldn't believe what was happening. I quickly pulled myself together and crawled outside my room. He strolled behind me and stepped on my legs, preventing me from moving. Where do you think you're going? He said as he applied more pressure on my leg. 
and I screamed in pain as I begged for my life, and then he started kicking my stomach, calling me names. I thought I would die. What would become of my mother? She'll come home to her dead son's body, lying on the ground. Hot tears flowed down my eyes. She still hasn't gotten over my dad's death, and now her only son is about to be brutally murdered in his home. I had already given up until I heard the police siren. When Slow Death heard the siren, he tried running, but the police caught and arrested him, and I was taken to the hospital by paramedics. Slow Death was a wanted criminal who had just escaped prison. He was taken back to the prison where he belonged, and with tighter security. After almost a month, I was discharged from the hospital. Thankfully, my injuries weren't severe, but I suffered a broken leg. I could walk, but the doctor said I couldn't play football again, and my dream was shattered. Football was the only hope I had to go to college, and it was ruined because of a psycho who got angry over a video game. I couldn't play video games, as the shock was too much for me to handle. We couldn't afford therapy, so I burnt all my games, and ever since, I quit video games and focused on my education.